We have different uh, areas where we, we force him. I mean, politically isolate him is one, one thing, but also economic sanctions. And I don't buy this Russian narrative that the sanctions are not working. When we see the interest rate of uh, Russian central bank for their economy is 15%, this is how they assess their economy doing. Their budget is in huge deficit. So actually, they want us to believe that it doesn't work and, you know, just lift them. But what I agree with is that we have to also think about the out-of-the-box solutions that will make them uh, reconsider. And one of them is uh, using the frozen assets uh, to the benefit of, of Ukraine. This is something that Russia is definitely afraid of. Well, you'll also know that uh, many are working around the sanctions as well. Yes, granted, yeah. there are the frozen assets. But even here in London, um, we are seeing people working around sanctions. Uh, we had a report on Sky News that we did ourselves about the sort of weapons and the parts making their way to Russia through mm -hmm. third countries. Absolutely. This is, a, this is a great concern. And that's why uh, we have proposed to ban all transits via, via Russia, because very often, you know, the chips or, or technology uh, is, uh, is uh, reported to go to Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. We don't have the tools to check whether they really reach those countries, but we have big doubts that they actually are not going there, but they're going to Russia. We've also heard uh, from uh, Emmanuel Macron. He is saying that we shouldn't rule out having boots on the ground in Ukraine. Since then, we've had a number of countries, the UK, the US, Germany, come out and push back and say that's not the case. We're not going to have boots on the gr ground in Ukraine. Russia has responded and said that would further escalate things. What's your reaction to everything that's transpired over the last 24, 48 hours around this conversation? Well, first of all, uh, what we decide or discuss behind closed doors uh, should be as open as possible, that we discuss all the possibilities. And what is also important is that everybody is thinking, what more can we do so that Ukraine will win? Because without victory as a goal, we don't achieve anything. So you're uh, not so, ruling uh, out boots on the ground? Do you, you think that uh, Emmanuel Macron was right? Well, he didn't propose boots on the ground in a, in a very classical sense, but I think what we have to think is what more can we do and, and what we discuss behind closed doors, uh, we have to be open about this. Of course, we are all democracies and, and there uh, we also have to take into account the public opinion that different countries have. But what I want to stress is that uh, you know, um, we shouldn't be afraid of our own power, which means that Russia, you know, is saying that, you know, this or that step is escalation, where, you know, defense is not escalation. Um, well, so so actually, just to be clear, Prime Minister, you're saying boots on the ground should not be ruled out, that those conversations that are being had behind closed doors should be all options are on the table. Is that what you're saying, including boots uh, on the ground? I'm, I'm saying that uh, we should have all options on the table. What more can we do in order to really uh, help Ukraine win and push back uh, Russia to its borders? Because it's a question of uh, the European security architecture. It's also a question of global security architecture. If Russia wins, we're going to see more wars across the globe. And uh, this is uh, uh, nothing that we want to see. There are discussions about uh, and concerns around uh, America stepping back and Europe potentially being forced to, to step up. There is a conversation around arming Europe that uh, countries like Estonia have woken up to the threat of Russia and say that, you know, we need to be in a position, especially around cyber, uh, to, to be better equipped. There is also a conversation here in the UK uh, around a citizen army. Um, we've had pushback from the chief of the defence uh, and he said there isn't a threat of going to war uh, with Russia. There isn't a concern around a citizen army. Do you think that is wrong, that, that Europe, the UK, needs to prepare itself for war with Russia? Um, defence is not escalation and, and defence, building your defence forces is also acting as deterrence to Russia. What uh, the aggressor or, or uh, autocrats are provoked by is weakness. So you take up the war if you think you can win and that you take up only when you think you are stronger. That's why I have advocated for really investing more than 2% 
of, of our GDP to defense. Estonia is doing 3.2% of our GDP, but not all the countries are doing. So I was really surprised when uh, I thought that when the war started in Ukraine two years ago, it would have been a wake-up call to all the European countries to do more, to spend more on defense, to really uh, build defense forces so that they would act as a deterrence, where uh, it hasn't been so. In 2023, it was 11 countries that spent over 2%. And I don't really understand why, because, you know, in 1988, all the NATO countries spent more than 2% because uh, the threat was real. There was a cold war going on. Now there's a hot war going on in Europe and still uh, not everybody is taking it uh, seriously enough. This is a criticism of Donald Trump. Um, was he right then? Is it fair critique? Um, fair critique is that everybody should do more uh, for, for European defence as well. So I'm just going to push on a couple of um, issues. The first is the concern that uh, Moldova might have uh, around uh, Russia opening a new frontier and, and the worries around a referendum in uh, Transnistria. What are your concerns when it comes to that? Moldova is in a very uh, fragile state, being uh, uh, in the middle uh, there and, and a small country. So we definitely have to keep them in mind when we are helping Ukraine as well so that they are not left behind. And are you worried about the future of Estonia? We shouldn't be worried. If we are able to help Ukraine to defend themselves, then they're gonna, there are no next or there's not going to be a question who is next. When Russia wins in Ukraine, then we have to worry about uh, NATO being next. Uh, and of course, uh, most recently, Prime Minister, you were put on a Russian wanted list. Are you worried about your safety? No, I'm not. I guess what well, we've seen the way that the Russians have operated, uh, you know, when they have uh, attacked citizens and and people outside of the country, does it not worry you in, in any way, uh, given you're now on this list? Well, um, Russia wants to intimidate us. Uh, this is how they operate. Uh, they might w want to make me or Estonia afraid and uh, to make us refrain from the decisions that we would otherwise make. Uh, to, you know, be advocates for supporting Ukraine, the Western unity, everything that really annoys them a great deal. Uh, but I think the response to it is that we shouldn't be afraid uh, and we shouldn't refrain from the decisions that we would otherwise make because this is how, you know, terrorists operate. They want us to be afraid. And the only is, response is that we are, we are not afraid. We act what is, what is right Prime Minister, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.